G'day, Nick from Australian Native Bee. This video is a tutorial on how to make a mobile. I was asked recently to go to a school and have a stall there, so I thought about what different things I could make and I decided to uh, try my hand at uh, felting and mobile making. So that's what this video is about. Not really related to stingless bees or what I normally do, but I thought I would upload it anyway. Okay, the first thing we want to do is make our bee balls or our felt balls. And how I do that is unravel wool and flatten it out so there's no thick wool lines. You want it really misty and thin. Then roll that into a ball uh, like this. That's what the ball looks like. And then get some warm soapy water, create a lather on your hands and you're going to soap the ball. Stop along the way to sort of push with your fingers any gaps or holes to cover them over and then get rolling till you have a ball formed. Once this is formed and it's fairly solid, dip it in the water and then you can begin to roll harder. In the beginning, just roll really soft. Your end product will look like this. The key to get a nice ball is that really thin fibres spaced out. If you use lots of thick fibres when you're spreading out your wool, you will get gaps and holes and it will be an awful ball. So don't do that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to tie the knots for the mobile. I've cut a couple of lengths of, uh, this is bamboo cord it's quite solid and strong and I've cut a couple of lengths and they're about mm, a meter and a bit long and I've folded those in half these are going to be your four points on your mobile and this other bit of string is going to be your center one here I'm lining up the string um, and this knot is called an eye crosser knot it's a knot I used to use when fishing. Uh, it's one of my favorite knots for fishing. And it looks really complex, but uh, the reality is it's just a thumb knot that spirals through on the loop um, two or three times. Um, so there you can see it. I've looped over the loop and I've done a thumb knot and then I've done another thumb knot and I'm going to pull it tight now. Now this knot is actually a slip knot, but we're not gonna slip it close yet because we want this knot to be the knot that ties our two lengths of uh, thread together. And these two lengths of thread create our four points in which the mobile will hang off. Now we want this to be a fairly permanent um, knot, so what I'm going to do instead of just looping it over and pulling it tight is I'm actually pulling it through the loop a second time. I'm doing this quite slow so that uh, you can sort of slow the video down and watch it when you are making your own. So you can see I flipped it over the main loop a couple of times and now I'll be cinching it closed and we'll be ready for our next step. All right, after you have your loop cinched down, cut that little tag end off, and you're gonna separate the lines into your uh, loop lines or your main lines, which will form the, four, form the four points and your center line. Now the center line in this knot isn't really involved in the knot in terms of it's not being tied. It's just being used uh, by the other two uh, lines or four lines if you like uh, to provide a center point and this knot I don't know what it's called um, it's commonly used in paracord bracelets and survival sorts of things uh, and it's one of the most simple knots to tie to create a pattern you could do anything here you could do a plait um, or a braid uh, whatever you want but this one, the process for doing it is you take your, either your left or right first, like this. You lay it over the center line and you'll see there's a little cross. Where that cross is, you come up underneath with your other line and you pull it tight. You'll notice when you start to do this that you get a little uh, bump or knot at the top when you pull it tight. And that little knot indicates 
um, that that is the side that will overlay the center line. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you were to just repeatedly do the one side on this knot, you would end up with a spiral looking knot, uh, but I want a flat one. Here's the process in fast forward. If you have trouble, go have a look at some paracord knots. You can do anything here. This is just to create a, uh, I guess, a really, really strong join before your next step. Okay, so now we've got our loop, we've got our paracord knot, it's time to mark out the points in which the mobile will hang from. Now you may want a long drop, you may want a short drop. What I did is just use the uh, full length of the hoop um, to make uh, my points in which I will hang my four points from. So that's what I've done, loop on one side of the hoop and I'm creating a mark across all four, well, five strands here. We only really need four of them marked. We don't need the center one marked, but um, that's what I've done. Now you're gonna pull that mark. This is the tying of your mobile knot. And I, this is part of the reason I made this video is I couldn't find a mobile knot. So I thought I would uh, create one. Now this knot, the name of this knot is called uh, the constrictor knot. It's a variation of another really useful knot called the clove hitch. And um, basically you go around, you create a cross, and then you're going to loop your extra bit of thread underneath that cross. Now why this knot is useful is it, it grabs on to round things, uh, round bars, and it holds very fast to round bars and it won't move. The clove hitch is very close behind this knot, but it still will wiggle a bit and slip on a shiny surface like I've got here. So let's have a look at that again. You put your marked point that you've marked, hold that there with your thumb, bring your other line over. You've got a cross. And then with your tag end, you're gonna go round again and underneath that cross like that and pull it tight. Okay, by the time you have your four knots tied um, and you've slid them round to make sure that your mobile hangs evenly, your felted balls uh, should be dry and you can start on the lines. A Couple of things I wanna show you. If you want your lines to be flush, you need to felt them all with a felting needle. Uh, felting needle's got little barbs on it. Now I try and stab like this, and I don't, so you can see the point poking out there. You don't wanna to stab too deep, otherwise you'll stab yourself. So uh, the felting needle works quite well, just on the tip there, and you stab. So the lines, I just pull a piece of wool off, I twist, uh, rip it off, and then I roll it in my hand, so I've got a straight line. And I'll just start at one end and work my way around like this. So just doing a single stab as I go around, and then I'll go around with the felting needle to finish it and do lots of stabs. Now the eyes, I just twist up a little ball, I put them on, where you stab the needle is where you will get the wool going, so don't be stabbing everywhere. I put them all in roughly and then I go back and stab them. Here's a whole bowl of them I've made. It's many hours of work, um, but that's what you do for babies. The next thing I will be doing is adding wings to these bees. Now, how I do that is um, just the same as the bees. I prefer to buy a whole ball of wool. It's cheaper that way. I grab a full uh, palm length of wool and I pull it off and I fold the ends. This is a seven felting needle. It's got seven needles in it and uh, it's really good for flat felting. I like this tool quite a lot. You can actually pull off the back and replace needles if you break them. Um, if you want to cheat one of these, you can probably go on eBay and find them. Um, if you don't care and you want it now, you can probably go to a spotlight shop and they're about uh, $40 Australian to buy. Uh, 
uh, it's got a retractable tip on it. So when you push it on, it uh, the retractable tip goes back and all the needles come out and stab. So what I like to do is just create like a, I guess a, an oval of uh, flat felt. And I want my wings to be quite fluffy. This particular needle will create fluffy needles because as the needle goes through the wool, it grabs fibers from one side and pushes them and entangles them in the fibers on the other side. So keep flipping it over as you work and go along. I'll do a little time lapse of this so you can see it sped up. Uh, when you've finished your little felt thing, I use a singular needle, position your where you want your wings to be. I usually line it up with the second black line on the B. And just start uh, with your felting needle, a singular felting needle, and create a little line across the B. So let's have a look at this process in time lapse so you can see it uh, quicker than this. Pull the wool off, flip it over, go across the top of the B, towards the back, pull the wings in a bit with the needle before felting them. And then I use the seven, seven needle just to make them really furry and nice. After all your bees are tarn, it's time to put them on your mobile. I use a bobbin threader. I got this from my fly tying kit. You stab it through the bee, hook your line through the bobbin threader and pull it back through your bee. And you can also use it to put beads and these little things called a bead crimp on underneath. You squash them with pliers and then your bees are attached. The next thing is I'm gonna add a few flowers on this try and take some inspiration from nature and the colors in nature and you can go and have a look i'm not going to go into how you make felted flowers it just it's a really long drawn out process but i just thought i would include some pictures of the laying out of these flowers and uh just beginning wetting them down um, I actually wanted mine furry, so I used my 7-pin needler rather than to straight wet felt the flowers. Um, but same process, uh, <coughs> wetting, working with the fibres, getting them to all knot. Yeah. When you're done, attach your flowers and your mobile will look something like this. Uh, you may prefer to make it more detailed. Go to a tackle shop. Um, find out what swivels you can use. You may want to do a different sort of a mobile like this one um, or just a single one like that.